Joining me now live is Sport and Life Training CEO Dave Burt. Dave, lovely to have your company today. Thank you for joining us. Um, it's really great we are beginning to see some sense of urgency from our political leaders here. Are you satisfied with the government response? Well, I, I guess we're never satisfied, but it's great to see that this is now um, such a, a prominent issue. And if um, it enables charities like ours that work in the space of local sporting clubs to have these conversations at a level where we feel that we can get real buy-in because we know in sporting clubs when they come together they're very invested in the culture and um, if we can um, get them to start having these conversations and start using their influence particularly uh, with young boys and uh, with coaches and with parents into the future I think we can bring around about some real substantial change but yes there has to be further funding particularly in areas I think that are very preventative like the one that we're in in, in local sporting clubs. Yeah, and it's it's a whole societal approach here to the issue, isn't it? The government response and funding is incredible, but government can't do it alone. It's a whole societal approach here and we really need immediate action and those preventative measures that you were speaking about. Can you just tell our viewers um, a little bit about the work that you do at Sport and Life Training and a little bit about the not-for-profits mission? Yes, well, we started 10 years ago and we started on the back of my experience. I worked with seven clubs who'd all had suicides in their clubs of people who they loved. And when I went in there, I heard a very similar message most times, and that was we never saw it coming. And after that, we had these very real conversations with the communities where they showed tremendous care for one another. And I felt at the time that we needed to do something preventative rather than reactionary. And so I started SALT as a not-for-profit education company that would go into the grassroots sporting clubs and talk about issues all the way back to peer group pressure and decision making when you're a child and setting up what kind of teenager you want to be, respect and equality, drug and alcohol, positive parenting, positive coaching, and of course, wellbeing and mental health. All of these things feeding into the long-term plan of a, of a young person as to what kind of adult they're going to be and what kind of influence they're going to have. So that's what we do in a whole range of clubs across the country now. Oh, incredible. And as you mentioned before, sporting clubs can have such an influence on a range of issues. Um, how can sports clubs, I guess, help to manage and speak out against gendered violence? You know, when we started this, Holly, 10 years ago, sporting clubs never saw their mission as being to do much more than, than field teams. But times have changed, and particularly post-COVID, clubs know now that if they don't become places that are respectful and caring and connected and and, and courageous in terms of changing some of the, the dialogue and the way that we do things and the emphasis on winning at all costs, that they're actually not going to survive. So sporting clubs have a vested interest mm. to try and create those communities of care. And actually, they'll succeed more on the field or the court or, or whatever if they do that. Um, I, I think now there's an understanding that if you can get the culture right... It's better for your sporting club, but also some of the institutions we used to rely on decades ago, that the family, the school, the church, the scouts, the YMCA, these things are not as strong as they used to be, but the sporting clubs have remained that very strong place of connection that can have tremendous influence. If we can get the leadership in particular to be right, the captains, the coaches, the, the presidents of clubs mm. need to be you know, appointed on their strengths not just in terms of their sporting acumen, but, you know, their understanding of the issues that their clubs can influence. Well, it's impossible to ignore this issue, isn't it? Because all of the players, no matter what sport you're in, you have mothers, sisters, friends, you know, it, it's impossible to ignore this. And it's so great that we're beginning to see sporting clubs really stand up, uh, particularly over the last couple of weeks as well. But we saw a little bit of controversy, and I want to get your thoughts on this. Um, the AFL teams, of course, spoke out about gendered violence just last week. Um, then we also talked about and there were reports of, you know, Taron Thomas being given an olive branch despite allegations about his behaviour towards women. Are you concerned that potentially there, at times there are double standards within sporting clubs on this issue? Does there need to be a hard line here? There's always double standards in sporting clubs, whether you're talking at AFL level or you're talking at the local level. You can be talking about a third division football team who still prioritise winning sometimes at all costs. And that is going to be counterproductive for them in the long run. I, I do think we have to set the tone, but it's interesting because sometimes what we do is we sweep the issues under the carpet for a long period of time and then suddenly it gets so out of hand that then we 
hold the person highly accountable and we you know suspend them from the club or something but we had a, an example with a, a local club where a young man was was very rude to some of the women that he was training with and so they punished him by banning him for four weeks and making him run water out to the girls team but when i asked the president of the club have you done any education in this space he said no have you actually talked about taking responsibility and how each of us has a responsibility? So I think sometimes we set people up to fail by not taking the precursor um, steps that we need to, to get them to understand why this is actually important. You said it earlier, this is our, our wives, our, our, our daughters, our, our mothers. Um, and, and so they have to understand the reason, but they also have to accept that it's their responsibility. We're all leaders, leaders, Leadership is simply influence, and, and all of us are going to have an influence. So I, I think you can make a stand at that level, but I think it's about every individual person within the club saying, I'm willing to have that conversation, be it with my son or daughter or teammate or whoever it is that I'm talking about when a situation arises and I feel uncomfortable about it. Yeah, in powerful words there, Dave. We could keep chatting about this, um, but I am really grateful to have you on today and incredible work that you're doing at the organisation as well. And sport can be so powerful in so many ways. So thank you for your time today. Appreciate it. Well, thanks, Holly. And we don't get too much government funding. So if there are organisations that want to support the work of SALT, please look us up, sportandlifetraining.com.au. Thanks, Holly. Mm -hmm. No worries, Dave. Thank you. And if this story has raised any concerns for you at all, you can always contact the Domestic Violence and Sexual Assault Helpline on 1800 RESPECT.